根华，人民根富贵，真呀，人民真富，今天等你了。In 1949, China, this great nation which has suffered over decades for its complete independence, raised in the east of the world. The People's Republic of China became the country with the largest population in the world. Many countries began to establish diplomatic relations with China. However, world's biggest power, the United States of America, was not on the same side with China at that time. We have to go back to the Chinese Civil War, which was started in 1945, to see the reasons. The Chinese Civil War was fought between the Nationalist Party, led by Jiang Kai-shek, and the Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong. Before the war was initiated, the First Lady of the Nationalist Party, Madame Jiang Kai-shek, gained support and trust from the United States by a very convincing speech before the House of Representatives. I can also assure you that China is eager and ready to cooperate with you and other peoples to lay a true and lasting foundation for a sane and progressive world society which would make it impossible for any arrogant or predatory neighbor to plunge future generations into another orgy of blood. The United States also tried to mediate between the uh, communists and the nationalists, but that was unsuccessful. So when the war broke, broke out, the United States provided uh, both military and financial assistance to the nationalist government. However, as a result of Chinese Civil War, the communists have successfully defeated the nationalists. Jiang retreated back to Taiwan and Mao established the People's Republic of China. Additionally, China was the ally with the Soviet Union as a newborn communist country, which intensified the conflicts between the People's Republic of China and the United States. Another incident happened in 1950 makes the relationship between China and the U.S. seems irretrievable. The Korean War North Korea started attacking South Korea in the January of 1950. The United Nations forces, including the U.S. Army, soon came into the situation and defeated the North Korea all the way back to the border of China. In the November of 1950, the Chinese Army entered the war and pushed the U.N. forces back to the 38th degree parallel. Massive battles between China and America makes the opposition of these two countries seem irreversible. In the next 20 years, these two countries stayed antagonistic to each other. However, nothing is really impossible. The Soviet Union and China's border problem on the Jinbao Island has resulted in series of initial ambush and large scales of fightings between China and the Soviet Union in 1969. The long, poorly demarcated border left numerous great zones in which China and the Soviet Union both claimed sovereignty. Struggles over ideology, leaderships, and resources has brought the Soviet-China relations to its lowest point. Among these incidents, the United States observantly detected the changes in the relations between these two communist allies and chose to utilize this opportunity to gain China's support in order to restrict the Soviet Union in the ongoing Cold War. In the February of 1972, President Richard Nixon visited China, symbolizing a significant relief of tensions between the United States of America and the People's Republic of China. East meets West as a handshake bridges 16,000 miles and 22 years of hostility. The world was tremendously changed as these two hands shaken. The two sides revealed a long-standing serious dispute between them, and they both expressed the hope that the gains achieved during this visit would open up new prospects for the relations between these two countries. On February 27, 1972, 
The two countries issued a joint communique of United States of America and the People's Republic of China. In this important diplomatic document, the U.S. and China agreed that neither they nor any other power should seek hegemony in the Asia-Pacific region. The two leaders agreed to expand cultural contacts between their two nations. Nixon also established plans for permanent U.S. trade missions in China. We must recognize that the government of the People's Republic of China and the government of the United States have had great differences. We will have differences in the future. But what we must do is to find a way to see that we can have differences without being enemies in war. I think, you know, the, the, in the short term, the ability to have a more formal relationship with China um, and, and the possibility of, of more commercial markets, more exchanges, would certainly, I think, seem to be a great boon for the United States in the short term, as well as in the long term. As, well. as President Nixon said, we cannot close the gulf between us, but we can continue rigid and talk across it. After seven years of compromises and negotiations, President Jimmy Carter announced the official agreement made with China. The government of the United States of America acknowledges the Chinese position that there is but one China and Taiwan is part of China. Yesterday, our country and the People's Republic of China reached this final historic agreement. On January the 1st, 1979, a little more than two weeks from now, our two governments will implement full normalization of diplomatic relations. Ever since the 1980s, China and the U.S. has established more than 60 dialogue mechanisms. The two sides have conducted extensive exchanges and cooperations in political, economic, military, educational, scientific, technological, cultural, counterterrorism, nonproliferation, and in international affairs. China-U.S. relationship is assuming greater global implications and strategic dimensions, and it has become one of the most important bilateral relationships in the world. Mr. President, thank you very much. It's an honor to be with you. There can be no more important subject than China. U.S. relation. 陪同特朗普总统访华的，还有由二十八位美国企业首席执行官组成的贸易代表团。十一月九号，中美企业家对话会在北京人民大会堂举行。两国企业共签署合作项目三十四个，金额达到两千五百三十五亿美元。这既创造了中美经贸合作的记录，也刷新了世界经贸合作史上的新纪录。According to the Chinese customs, bilateral trade has increased over 180 times from the beginning of diplomatic relationships. Based on the United States Census Bureau, U.S. export to China grew by 468% during the past 10 years, while its export to other countries only grew by 55% during the same period. Furthermore, since 1979, bilateral exchanges in cultural, science, technology and education have increased prosperously. The two sides have signed the Agreement on Cultural and Educational Cooperations and the Agreement on Cooperations in Science and Technology and has set up a number of dialogue mechanisms. These decisions and these actions has opened a new and important chapter in human history and in world affairs. Compromises between the most powerful nation in the world and the nation with the most population in the world. These compromises place already an important role in the world affairs, a role that can only grow more and more important in the years ahead.